witness at the Truth Commission says victims were forced to incriminate themselves or be tortured. Victims of last year August fire outbreak appealed to government and stakeholders for support. And the Gambia's health ministry says the country is preparing ahead of the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. These and more coming on Gambia 24. Stay tuned. Good evening, this is Gambia 24 with me, Sohna Tunkara, and to our news, news in detail, the Truth Reconciliation and Reparations Commission continued its investigations on the series of human rights violations and court on victims during the then-President Yahya Jammeh's regime. Basiru C, a member of the defunct NIA Special Operations, testified today on some of the unlawful arrest, detention and torture of victims he carried out. More of that in this report. The National Intelligence Agency office was directly ordered by the former president to conduct a series of atrocities in the country during his dictatorship. The agents who were mostly feared due to their proclaimed special operations were for years brutalizing people who were oppositions or perceived enemies of the president. Basiru say, a former army corporal who joined the NIA in 2015, narrated to the commission that the complexity of their special operations made many people scared. Mr. C, is not not really the brutality with which people who come to the special ops were treated, which actually instilled fear, and not the fact that people just see them going up and down? Exactly, Lola, because sometimes... Exactly. Because most of the time, So, time to go So, you environment. Exactly, that is it. Sometimes they hear screams uh, from uh, our end, and sometimes we don't even want to do things in the daytime. But in some occasions, we have to do that. And so when they hear these screams, they, they, are, they are perplexed. They don't know how to, what, thing, what is really happening. Isn't that, in fact, the reason why whenever your team set, 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 set out to go on an operation, they, they tell you, Alberta le kotenke. The 41-year-old Basiru C explained that people were forced to confess to crimes they have not committed and failure to cooperate with the operatives becomes detrimental to them. The parishes or Muneka Kohamdan Amniki of a Grau or something like that. High profile. They, these are, exactly. these are high profile arrests uh, of big like persons that. we suspect will resist or are deemed to be dangerous. IG, Inspector General, top officer, people like the Inspector General and other top officials. And where beatings are to be expected. Who, who would carry out those operations? Well, I'm not. I'm not speaking. It's an If at all they bring there a person. Well, go have me. The 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 moment so long, you don't jail go isiko. Someone that we wanted and have picked him or her up. You know, you do get mum sibir. So so also you do get mum sibir. Jail state menam or jam ko ne halwa muvanya wa. They will take the person inside, the OC will go with the person and they try to obtain a statement from that person. If the person is not cooperating, you will go out and tell the boys to give the individual a VIP treatment. What does VIP treatment mean in NIA language? VIP monkey dance, squad, press over you. It could be. 
They could be in the form of monkey dance, squatting, or press up. And uh, if at all, if in, after all of that you are still resisting, they may lay you on the table and use their hose pipes to lay you. According to many witnesses who appeared before the commission, victims were first tortured by the NRA before the interception of the death squad junglers. Basiru C was born in Banjul in 1979. He joined the Gambia National Army in 2001 and after serving for 12 years in the army, he was discharged in 2013 with a corporal rank. He joined the NRA in 2015 and is still serving as an agent for the new state security service. For iAfrica TV, Sohna Tunkara. That was Basiru C revealing to the Truth Commission on some of the human rights violations he did. Now, the Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmadul Lamin Samate, has provided a situation report on COVID-19 in the Gambia during select committee's meeting on health on Thursday, saying his ministry is prepared ahead to address any resurgence of the pandemic. And the recent, recent ladder, the Gambia has witnessed an increase in the number of new cases recorded daily after a month of decline in the country. More of that in this report by Fatima Takasim. As some European countries are battling with the second wave of the pandemic, the Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmadu Lamin Samate, said the Health Ministry is ready to address any resurgence of coronavirus. Different COVID-19 vaccines recommended by health officials are currently available on a large scale in developed countries. The Gambia Health Minister said the country has chosen to participate in the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, when the H1N1 uh, viruses hit some parts of the world. Uh, the international community, especially the, uh, those in the health uh, sector, realized that access to the vaccines was a problem uh, for many of the developing countries, uh, low-income countries. So this time around, they, that anticipation was there. So there came a strategy. So the partners met, uh, the WHO and uh, Gavi and all the other partners uh, they started, Gavi is the Global Alliance uh, for Vaccines uh, Initiative. Now, uh, they came together and they came up with a facility called COVAX, uh, the COVAX facility. Now, that COVAX facility is to help mainly low-income countries get access to these vaccines so that we are not left out. And uh, Gambia is equally uh, not left out. Uh, we are happy to inform uh, this August gathering of honorable members uh, that the initial processes of engagement have started uh, with, with, with the COVAX facility, uh, some documentation of uh, demonstration of interest, uh, no commitment yet. When the first wave of the pandemic relaxed in many countries, borders and airspace resumed normal operations. The Gambia received its first flight sometimes in December last year. Babanding Sabali, Director of National Pharmatic Services, said a stringent method will be adopted to curb the spread of the virus at the airport entrance and exit point. The airport is, is an important entry point in this country. And it's there where our situation in terms of our response to uh, COVID intervention will first be cited. As I saw, we just put sanity there and ensure that things are working there. However, if a traveler arrives at the airport, sometimes the situation is not as conducive in terms of ensuring the minimum standard of social distancing and measures to prevent COVID-19. So we want, uh, we are appealing as a chair of the Logistic Committee, if the National Assembly can also add their voice to the authorities at the airport to ensure that we all help one another to put in place measures that will cope the spread of uh, COVID in this country. The Gambia has on Wednesday recorded three new cases, taking the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 3,893 with one death recorded. The total death toll is now 127, according to the latest report released by the Ministry of Health. For iAfrica TV, I am Fatima Takasim. 
And from that report by Fatumata Kasim, the Citizens Alliance has on Thursday held its second monthly press conference to engage citizens on current issues. Part of the issues discussed was the high rate of maternal mortality in the Gambia. The party's flag bearer, Dr. Ismail Sisse, said healthcare workers need more training in order to reduce his threat. The Sisse files in this report. The Gambia is ranged among countries with high maternal mortality rates. The flag bearer of the Citizens Alliance, Dr. Ismail Sisi, on Thursday called on the government to do a lot of work to reduce the ratio of maternal mortality in the country. He told journalists that the government is not serious with the issue because they have no proper data to show exactly what is happening. And also, there is no official diagnosis for the prevalence of maternal mortality with no priority given to maternal health care. Dr. Sisa said that government should invest in training healthcare workers to avoid their student childbirth. So if physical infrastructure is gone, there are no supplies and of, of equipment in our hospitals. Shortage of adequately and appropriately trained staff, the human resource factor is key. We think the government should invest in training of medical staff in this country. High attrition rates. Because they are not motivated when they see greener pastures, they leave. And also, inadequate referral system. The main referral hospital, I think, is in Banjo. The Citizens Alliance presidential candidate talked about the recent drug seizure at the country's only seaport in Banjo. He urged the government to strongly empower the law enforcement agencies to make sure that the suspects are prosecuted. We urge the government to strongly empower the law enforcement agencies, especially the DELIC. They must be empowered because why? They need the necessary equipment and the technology to be able to trace, track, arrest, and prosecute these people who are involved in these kind of activities. Meanwhile, following the president's attack on media houses in the Gambia, Dr. Sisa said the Citizens Alliance will empower media houses and work with GPU to create opportunities for young people who want a career in journalism. We'll do the necessary media reforms and make sure the media is empowered. The media has a role to play. The role they play is to hold government accountable and to make sure the public is as informed as possible about what government is doing so they can make the right choices. And that's a very critical role that the media is playing. So our role, like we are doing now, we are not going around uh, saying, insulting the media, we're engaging the media. Even if you report things that are not favorable to us, that's it. Sometimes you report favorable, so it doesn't favorable. It's not favorable, but you are doing your job. So we'll invest in the media as well. Because we believe that the, the journalists in this country also need more training and more motivation as well. We need professional journalists as well. So therefore, we'll try to find ways to work with the GPU, Gambia Press Union, to create opportunities for young people like you who want to have a career in journalism to make it in journalism. Visit Wolf Blitzer, CNN. Um, these top CNN, they're not better than you. They're not smarter than you. You can become another if it's the right opportunity, with the right chance, that support, you can become an international journalist. The Citizens Alliance, a new political party formed in 2019, said they are not into politics for competition or criticisms. Rather, they are there to hold the current government to account. Dr. Ismail Aziza said, Citizens Alliance wants to remove Gambia from politics of deception to the politics of reality. For iAfrica News, I am Day Sisi. And from that report filed in by NDCC, we'll go with a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more news. In the mood of pranking your friends? Change your voice and spice up your calls with AfriCell Magic Voice Service. You can choose to talk with a cartoon, a woman's or a monster's voice for only $1 per day. To activate the magic voice, call or SMS 188 or simply dial star 188 hash. Have fun and enjoy the laughs. Where AfriCell goes, oh, oh, nobody. There's to follow. There's to follow.
Welcome back. You're still watching Gambia 24 and now we continue with the news. The victims of Bilkama fire outbreak has called on government's assistance as they continue to battle with challenges posed by the blazing fire. The fire that disrupted the whole market sometime last year has caused serious damages to various businesses and most of the victims are yet to recover. Africa TV had a follow-up interview with some of the victims and this is the report. <laughs> It could be recalled that five months ago, the Birkama market suffered a fire outbreak that left at least 35 store shops born to ashes, as well as huge sum of money and valuable materials destroyed. Speaking to iAfrica on Tuesday, the fire outbreak victims explained the aftermath of the incident while calling on the government to come to their aid. Ajiseka said her only source of generating income was ravaged by the fire and has since then been knocking on all doors but to no avail. By last time, I am one of the victims of the fire outbreak that took place the third day of the Eid. And since the fire outbreak, we have been calling for help. We have families that depend on us and apart from God, we depend on our business to feed our family pay rent and solve our problems. Since the fire outbreak, we did not see anyone who came to help us. We are asking for help from the government. It has been a while since this happened and we are still waiting for help from the government. Anyone, any kind of help will be appreciated because this is the business we know. The devastating incident is the second of its kind that the Birkama market has encountered in 2020. To many, the outbreak is as a result of negligence of the authorities. Basiru Jalo, the PRO of the victims, said they have written a series of letters to the government and different stakeholders. He said the market committee has made documentation of the outbreak, but still nothing is forthcoming. <laughs> We are calling on the government to help us, as you can see the unfinished building. We have started building the area that was affected the most, but at some point we got stuck on the way due to financial constraints. Some started building their places a long time ago, but still on the process. Others have exhausted the only money that they had left in the bank. So we are pleading with the government for help because no one will say they were not aware of the fire outbreak. They all saw the destruction. Contrary to what the victim said, Modu Jonga, CEO of Brikama Area Council, said support was extended, but it's not enough to compensate for the loss. The market is under construction by victims themselves, and this time, they assured precautionary measures will be taken to avoid the recurrence of another fire outbreak. There have been there have been some support. Uh, you cannot call that compensation, uh, uh, sort of. And we are very concerned with the frequent fire outbreaks. And and as a result, uh, we have recently recruited electricians, qualified and competent electricians, to be able to review, you know, the electrical installations in the market because they are. Uh, uh, mainly responsible for the frequent outbreaks, and so with the appointments of this of this personnel, you know, the, the thing of frequent uh, fire outbreaks in the market in Brikama, most especially, and other markets will be a thing of the past. So we have put up a corrective measure to to address that. The fire is reported to have been caused by faulty electrical wires, but Nawek has, however, refuted that claim. Brikama market is one of Gambia's biggest market, but it has been labelled by many residents within the region as the most neglected market in the country. According to some victims, the Bikama Area Council came for supervision once and has since never returned nor extended any form of help. Victims of last year August fire outbreak seek for assistance from government and stakeholders. Well, viewers, with that report ends today's Gambia 24 with me, Sahna Tungara. Thanks for watching and bye for now.